good morning let us resume our discussion of uh, um, cnn architecture supplied to computer vision tasks so what did we discuss in the last class can one of you quickly uh, brief or give uh, a couple of points what were the computer vision tasks we discussed and what is what are the kinds of architectures that we have suggested sir we have discussed about uh, detection and tracking of the objects using cd and also we have uh, discussed about the different architecture that are used for the uh, detection and tracking purposes like fast rcnn and dual v5 so uh, deep sort techniques uh, these were uh, these were the uh, topic that was discussed okay so uh, we discussed about object detection frameworks mainly and we discussed about uh, one stage and two stage object detectors and then we started discussion on the stereo images and 3d reconstruction yes so um, as i mentioned 3d reconstruction is very one of the very important uh, task in computer vision and it has been dealt um, in the conventional computer vision through establishing the correspondence between each pixel in one image to the pixel in the other image okay so which like for each of the point here which is the corresponding point okay that is the question that we ask and based on the correspondence that we establish our similarity of the patch which we take here versus the patch that is there in the next image okay that is left image versus right image okay in a stereo in a pair of stereo images what we do is this relative distance in the projection of a scene point will give us disparity and the disparity is used to calculate the height or depth okay of the object from the camera okay so that's what conventionally the, done for each point in the scene and collating or bringing all of them into them and putting in matrix form gives the depth information okay projecting on the third dimension okay so that's how the um, depth is inferred from stereo images now given the deep learning architectures so let's see now how the deep learning architectures help in doing this any idea from the students assume that we have left and right images okay this is left image and this is right image so what we were doing our main aim is to establish for each key point or each point which is the corresponding point okay you may have some objects here okay some uh, objects may be there with some shifts and so on based on their uh, um, distance okay from the camera right so and now what we want to do is we want to establish a correspondence or find out similarity where this object is being shifted in this okay so we want to say that this is shifted okay by these many units this object is shifted by these many units okay with respect to the previous object this is shifted by these many units this is shifted by uh, these many units so like that we want to give for each of the object how much shift it has occurred based on its depth and within the object also each point may be shifted by different different amounts based on its depth okay so to do that what essentially is done using deep learning is once basic idea as i mentioned is feature extraction so each of the deep learning method has the ability to extract features okay at a very uh, low level to high level features so we uh, we give this uh, to a cnn convolution neural network architecture uh, or fully con convolutional architecture and extract features okay so these are all the feature maps these are called deep features if we use reasonable number of layers in cnn we do the same for this so why are we doing this can any quick answer for this why are we doing this feature extraction as a first stage instead of finding similarity as we do in similar conventional methods hmm quick answer is required why are we doing this feature extraction stage okay hari pratyusha okay prasad you can tell 
The feature extraction is uh, with the first stage, sir. Yeah, why are we doing feature extraction here? The reason being, see, we want to find out similarity, right? So we want to find out correlation between each patch here versus here. Okay, but we don't want to do it at a image scale or a pixel scale, sorry. We don't want to do it at a pixel scale or path scale. We want to see whole image. What is the shift of each point at, from this point, this image to this image, okay? At each point in a single stretch, okay? So in a single step. So that can be done taking the features of whole image that, and features of whole image and finding correspondence in, instead of finding an image space, Okay, that means between the image pixels, we want to find correspondence in the feature space, right? That means here a patch represents to whatever is the region here. Say, for example, if this point itself here, this point means all this point in all, all maps, this sees this much region. Okay, so then it means that, say, for example, this point, okay, let's mark this point. This point sees this much region, okay, through their receptive field. It means that we are looking at this point and this point is matching, means that this patch and this patch are matching. Okay, this again, this point is corresponding to this. Okay, so if you feel that this patch is corresponding to these points, this patch is corresponding to these points and this feature vector and this feature vector is most similar among the other feature vectors when from here to here comparison, okay, so then this feature, this two patches are similar. What essentially we're doing is, instead of establishing the similarity or comparison of patches in the image scale or image space, we are trying to see the same in feature space. Okay, we are trying to see which features are similar for from the left image features to right image features. Okay, and that effectively is done through constructing a cost volume. What this cost volume does, see, usually what happens because of the scene points being at different, different uh, depths, different, different shifts will happen for the image information from left to right. See, different, different shifts means what? This from here to here, the shift may be, say, uh, uh, two units. Okay, for this, let it be two units. Let this be four, five units. This may be, say, for example, okay, oh, four units like this. So at different, different locations, different, different shifts can happen of the objects based on their depth or of the scene points based on their depth. Okay. So that we would like to account in a single stretch or in a, like in cost volume. So how we want to do it, say this one, say if there is a shift of only two units, we want to see these all these say these feature maps, this let left feature maps. Okay. Sorry, right feature maps. They're all right feature maps. And these are all left feature maps. Right? So what we want to do is we want to see correlation between right feature maps. Okay, I write correlation like this and left feature map. Wherever if this in this correlation map, okay, if I see that there are some points where the high values. Okay, these are the values where they are actually peaks. A peaks means the correlation is high or actually they are, uh, mm, their similarity in the feature space is high. Okay, in feature space. Right? So now what may happen in the, what does it mean? corresponding to this, whichever are the image regions. Okay, those image regions are matching well. Okay, with zero shift itself. That means there is objects have no depth there. Okay, are in the sense that they form background. If we consider zero depth as the background. Okay, so it means that, so these are all actually uh, D equal to depth equal to, or disparity equal to. Now, if we consider, since we are measuring disparity here as shift, okay, disparity is equal to zero for these points, okay? So now what we do, this is the cost volume, one part of cost volume, okay? Volume as it indicates, it's not 2D, it's now in 3D. See, if I can find out correlation map, one correlation map, 
with zero shift here. Okay. So next what I do, I will find out correlation map. with shift equal to one, one unit. So what does this imply here? Shift equal to one unit means, see, I right features correlation with left features. Okay, if they are all at, actually shifted by one unit, right? So um, I may write it as left features. Okay, I just write delta and R LF. Okay, if they are at N, okay, N minus one I am writing. Okay, just N minus one or N plus one. Okay, just we, I have written with a loose notation. Okay, n minus one means it is x minus one, uh, mm, comma uh, y. Say for example, if we consider x axis, rho is rows are same, x comma y minus one. Okay, l f x comma y minus one. That means right features are correlated with left features with a shift of one in y direction or in the column direction. Okay, so these shifted features will have highlights or in this, the peak, peaks will occur. In which locations? Can one of you tell? Where does the peaks occur in this shifted uh, like correlation? Again, there may be some regions where there are peaks. Where there are more similar. Yeah, where there are more similar peaks occur. But what does it mean? Say they have the peaks or the high correlation with a shift of one means what? Hmm? Disparity, yet peaks here, okay, are at those locations is what? Is equal to one unit. Okay, disparity is one unit. See, one unit here in units. But if we consider what happens, see CNN will have actually stride. Is it not? There are some subsampling, stride, okay, with convolution and so on. So there is an effect to stride from here to here. Effect to stride means what? One layer to another layer, if there is a stride of two, that layer to another layer is stride of two, then effect to stride will be four. Okay, and if there is a one layer to another layer stride of one, and that layer to another layer down sampling by two, then again stride will be two. Okay, like that. Uh, so the effect to stride is considered based on each pixel to pixel if I shift. Okay, how much shift does it occur in the original image? Okay, so if I shift by one unit here, okay, will it shift by two units? Then effect to stride will be two. Okay, if it shifts by eight units, then effect to shift will be, effect to stride will be eight. I hope you people understand this. That means the, for each small, like shift of one unit corresponds to how much shift in this. That's effect to stride. Okay, imply effect to stride is how much? Eight. Okay, so here disparity is one unit means what? Here it is equal to eight pixels. Because if effect to stride is eight. Okay, because if you shift here, the correlation is high now for a shift of one. Okay, then the, the disparity here is eight pixels, like that. Okay, so, but however, they, you can also shift with uh, sub-pixel shifts here. Okay, or also consider that the stride is reasonably maintained. Okay, so that you don't lose the resolution of the finding the disparity. Okay, so that's usually done. And uh, like this, for different, different shifts, if I consider, 
Okay, so now third thing. That means with a shift of, I consider correlation map. Oh, with shift of some three units or five units. Okay, like that. I keep uh, shifting by as many units as the levels, the number of disparity uh, levels I would like to consider. Okay, and construct all this, say this is a 2D map. Okay, and this is one, this is another 2D map. Also one and two and then three. So I put all these together and construct a cost volume. Okay, this is shift equal to zero. Oh, shift equal to one. Two and so on. Okay, so like that. For different shifts, if I consider, this is the cost volume. Is this clear? Like this, if I construct cost volume, what does it mean? I am accounting for correlations. Okay, at different, different, um, different, different, uh, uh, shifts are corresponding to different different disparities. So this whole thing is cost volume. In fact, actually these features and these features are put, they don't find correlation at a stretch. What do they do is say, these are the features RF and then LF, they are put in 3D. That means this C, if you have C, cross, C feature maps, that is H cross W cross C here. Here also H cross W cross C. Okay, so what we do in uh, cost volume is the dimension of cost volume will be okay H cross W cross two C. Okay, this is for only single zero shift plus another shift two C shift of one plus and so on as many disparity levels as we would like to put in. Okay, so essentially you concatenate the feature maps with zero shift, right? Especially right feature maps only because one of them you need not uh, put with different shifts uh, because they are all reference. Right in features are reference, left features you can shift or you can put vice versa. You can put the ref feature maps as reference and then shift the uh, right feature maps. Either way you can do. So essentially the cost volume is constructed like that. So one reference features, of one image and another feature features of the left image with zero shift, shift one, shift two, and so on, and concatenate all of them. On the top of this, you perform correlations. Okay, with respect to the as I mentioned here, you start from actually uh, correlation with zero shift, right image to the zero shift, right image to the first shift, one shift, two shift, and construct the cost volume. That also is three. Okay, so this cost volume construction is done through 3D correlations. Okay, 3D convolutions. The reason being, this is already in three dimensions, right? This is also in three dimensions. I want to see correlation of not just one feature map versus another feature map, but with a set of C feature maps versus set of C feature maps. That is done through 3D correlations. Okay, so essentially what is done, I, let me put the essential elements of cost volume. Okay, stacking, right features and left features with, okay, shifts of zero, one, okay, and as many disparity levels, D max. Okay, also stacking right features with left features. Okay, I just for simplicity, I will just write and only. Okay, but this is with no shift and these are with all shifts. Okay, this is first step. Second step is what? This is actually constructing the cost volume, 3D cost volume. Then performing 3D correlations, convolutions or otherwise. What is 3D convolution operation? What is special about uh, 3D convolutions? Uh, 
all shifted versions of of lf for constructing cos phi of course this also i think is considered as cos phi but for uh, um, constructing the cos subsequent okay and then this is used to find out the uh, whichever is the highest in terms of the uh, correlations in the shifts that is considered as the effect to disparity using these say uh, correlation maps uh, what we do say for example if with, these are all correlation maps with different shifts correlation and convolution maps d equal to 0 d equal to 1 and so on up to d equal to d max if we have the effective disparity is considered as say d into sum of dk kth correlation map or d uh, like uh, dk means dk equal to 0 you can consider okay d1 is equal to so, sorry, dk, what I'm representing is the value of d, right? However, there is a, uh, mm, what happens at any pixel, if we consider, there is a value for this correlation map that will decide which d is more dominant. See, at this pixel, d1 may be more dominant, this may be more dominant. Okay, at other pixel, okay, if you consider at this pixel, uh, that means at this uh, feature location, Okay, the, this one may be more dominant. That means this value may be high, this correlation may be high. So in that case, in that case, d hat has to be equal to d max. Okay, in this case, d hat has to be equal to d1. So that has to be automatically happen. So for that, what we do is d hat equal to d into, okay, so d into what? The value of uh, the correlation map. So what we essentially we do is after this correlation map apply to softmax as well. Okay, softmax is to bring them to a uh, mm, uh, to a zero to one range, especially to bring to the probabilities. Then they give the probability of is corresponding map. Okay, this is a 2D information, x, y, right? Probability of corresponding map in 2D. So this we probability of corresponding map in 2D will essentially will give us the disparity values, okay, d hat values, okay, in 2D. Okay, this d is scalar, only indicating shifts, but this d is uh, vector, so in our notation. Okay, so if you are uh, not very comfortable, you can slightly put different location for the disparity here. Okay. So this is disparity, let's put capital D, no? so that uh, this differentiate. Oh, disparity at each location now is equal to obtained by weighing with the corresponding disparity and its probabilities. Okay, probabilistic sum of all disparity maps. All like the correlation maps, weighted sum of all correlation maps. Okay, and from here, this disparity map, you can get the height map through triangulation and inverse relation that you have. Okay, so now uh, this is how the deep learning based methods find out the depth information from left and right images. Okay, they first bring in the features. Once they bring in the features, they construct a cost volume with the features and shifted features of the other image. Okay, and then they try to find out the correlation maps with each shifts, okay? And these correlation maps, essentially with zero shift and one shift and so on, okay, are constructed through 3D convolutions. What is 3D convolution? Okay, if you have actually set of 3D maps here, okay, you know, right? So 3D convolutions we have seen in the previous uh, um, document. So you construct correlation on this region. Okay, this is very rough depiction. But you people understand, okay? You consider uh, each uh, kernel itself is now in 3D, okay? Five cross five cross six or whatever, okay? And that kernel is will find out the element-wise multiplication at all the six maps and add it and give the at that pixel to give a 2D map. So 3D to 2D you can do, okay? To find out the uh, convolutions, 
uh, and that's what effectively used to get the disparity map, uh, like the uh, probabilities of the disparity maps for disparity zero, for disparity one, and disparity map, different dif max. Using that, we find out the effective disparity map. Okay, our predicted disparity map. Is are these details clear? Okay, are these details clear? Okay. See, in fact, they may not do with 3D to 2D directly. They may do sub some 3D and then subsequently, finally, they will bring in, okay, 2D map, you know, given the correlations. Because they want to see the uh, how the 3D features already W cross H cross C here and W cross H cross C here. How do they correlate? Okay, through 3D convolutions, extract features in the 3D space itself to some extent. Okay, with their uh, mm, instance uh, convolutions, 3D convolutions. Okay, and then finally, for that cost volume, they extract high level correlation or the correlation 3D and bring it to 2D. Okay, so any questions on this? Okay, if there are no questions, I will show some slides. But if you have any questions, please ask. Okay. Okay, let me sh uh, share some slides now. Hope you are able to see these slides. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I have taken uh, a paper to discuss and describe about uh, depth estimation that is pyramidal stereo matching network. So this is a very well known or widely used method for stereo matching. So this uh, mm, uh, has the elements of uh, not only finding out the depth information, but also some of the elements that we have discussed before, like analyzing the image or in feature information at multiple scales or multiple resolutions to get the better estimates. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, in all computer vision methods, uh, analyzing the information at different scales is important because objects uh, may appear in different images at different scales. And also, uh, and feature extraction cannot be done uh, effectively for all objects, different uh, size objects or different scales objects in a single uh, resolution image, okay, or in a single scale of uh, convolutions. So for that reason, this uh, constructs the spatial, this uses the spatial pyramidal um, pooling module to effectively extract the features of different uh, spatial uh, dimensions. So the convolutions are done at 8 cross 8, 16 cross 16, 32 cross 32, and 64 cross 64 through different sizes of pooling. So the feature maps are first extracted and then different pooling is done. It effectively sees that the receptive fields are all different for this. That means we are looking at features at different regions or different scales. Okay, and then convolution and then upsampling to bring into the uh, same dimension and concatenate. So why are they being the same dimension is finally they wish to have the feature maps at the same dimension to construct the cost volume. Okay, and also that will essentially uh, give a core like the convenient way of comparing the right image features with the ref left image features. Okay. So they uh, here in stereo image based uh, processing, same feature extraction has to be done from the right image and left image because those will be compared later to see the similarity. Okay, if we perform one operation here, another operation here, okay, we can't expect the similarity of the same object in both images. For that reason, so same exactly same network that we use here will also be used here. Okay, and then we construct a cost volume. As I mentioned, cost volume is stacking of right image features, uh, H cross, W cross C, with respect to the all shifted versions of uh, the uh, left image features. Okay, H cross, W cross C into D. That means those many uh, mm, uh, layers will be stacked. And this, uh, after this, uh, say, some kind of feature extraction is done to 3D convolutions, CNNs. So these essentially may try to find out the interrelations between the feature maps. Okay, and then they through that they will construct a cause essentially a, this uh, this is done the uh, 3D CNN is effectively involves uh, a kind of um, 
uh, architecture called stacked hover glass. What this does is not just analyzing at a single scale, but it tries to analyze the information at different scales. These scales meaning here with different strides when we bring in convolutions, they will bring the information details at different levels. Okay, that are all stacked are different levels of say, if we consider this um, piece of information with the different, uh, um, uh, uh, like it has a series of downsampling and upsampling layers. Uh, the reason being we would like to compare finally the depth information or disparate information at the same scale at the same level. However, in between we can have the flexibility to downsample and extract better features, encode and decode kind of architecture. Okay, so it's uh, like after performing the CNN operations or feature extraction, it again tries to do in uh, uh, several levels of uh, feature encoding and decoding. And then at the decoded features of same scale, it tries to find out the, um, like the ca cost. Cost, as I mentioned, it's the uh, um, correlation between the original features and the shifted features of the other image. Also, they use for doing all upsampling here, the technique called um, uh, dilated convolutions. These are nothing but fractionally slided. Con they are, these are somewhat similar to fractionally slided convolutions, but dilated convolutions mainly what they does is, so see if usually if we have the image information, that kernel information, we put it at a continuous uh, region in the uh, image, but whereas, with the uh, in dilated convolutions, we put the kernel information with a dilation or with a gap of uh, as many pixels as we wish. Here, with a gap of one one pixel is put. So, uh, dilated convolution with uh, two uh, you can consider um, as the say uh, um, fractional stride of two it will introduce. Okay, so what we are doing is essentially this region we will scan and then put into this whole region. We will uh, put the kernel. Uh, that means this whole region means a three cross three will sit here. Uh, so instead of three cross three occupying three cross three region in the original image, it occupies five cross five region, okay, essentially. And at these locations, uh, we will put the kernel. Okay, and then that means the kernel values are being uh, put with gap of one one values and then find out the correlation. Also, that means uh, convolution. Also, that means what we do is instead of uh, kernel of 3 cross 3 applying at uh, 3 cross 3 location, we will apply at 5 cross 5. Okay, so the receptive field it looks is bigger. That's what happens in the dilated convolutions. Like that, we uh, we can use this also to upsample. That means for whole this region, we will get one value. Again, for the next region, we get the uh, another value like that. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we um, uh, construct the cost volume with the features stacking, um, and then we use that for finding the uh, similarity of different disparity or different shifts from right image to the left image in feature space, and that is effectively used to compute the overall disparity. So the if you consider D itself as the probabilities are the feature maps with uh, the uh, softmax feature maps uh, after the correlations. Okay, and then uh, this is the confidence we have. Okay, on the value, oh, sorry, these are the correlate, these are the uh, probabilities and this is the value of D. And then what we do is the D hat is what exactly we have written on the effective disparity at that location. Okay, so this is done at each location. So D hat is at each location. So this we do for the, this is the cost. Uh, comparing the D hat, the predicted uh, disparity of the network with respect to the ground truth disparity and minimizing this at each pixel, okay? So here, please note that D is a scalar here and D hat is also made as scalar, but if we consider the whole map at once, this is a matrix, okay? So that's uh, the equations that we have written uh, are exactly same. So one, uh, like the last function that we use can be mean square error loss, uh, uh, bringing the D hat close to D, uh, D, or it can also be uh, the last functions like smooth L1 loss, where the L1 loss is enforced in the, uh, in uh, like, uh, in non-zero region, 
uh, that means the loss close to zero, if we consider L1 loss, then there is a uh, short variation of the L1 loss. As you know, the L1 loss shape is a V uh, kind of shape if we move with respect to, to the X. Okay, so then what we do is we consider the uh, L2 loss at the uh, near zero so that the smooth transition from uh, the loss going from this side to that side happens and there is no discontinuity in the loss function. Okay, and then the rest of the places we have the L1 loss. This is how the smooth L1 loss is and this is widely used not only in uh, stereo but also in several other applications. So here you can see the disparity maps. Uh, so where they depict the object depth. Uh, so you can see that, uh, so this is more farther. So this is a different color. Okay, this is way, quite closer. These are different colors and so on. Okay, so these roughly, this is color encoding uh, uh, represented by color bar will give us how much disparity they are or how much depth they are from the cameras. Okay, any questions? So this is applied to several data sets, including some of the cityscape scenarios. So this is on the cityscape data set, where you can see that how far a car or object is, person is and so on, and where the road is, you know, such details also we can get from. So any questions here? Okay, if there are no questions, I will uh, discuss on the visual tracking as well, uh, because uh, this we have partly discussed in the previous classes. So what essentially we do in visual tracking is uh, extracting the features like we did do in any of the deep learning methods and finding out, see visual tracking means what we want to track an object. Okay, so for example, if you see, we, uh, let me see if there is a, uh, yeah, fine. So here, if the, uh, mm, this is dog is moving, okay running we want to catch where it is exactly uh, if the ship is uh, like uh, mm, uh, going we want to see exactly where the location of it is similarly bicycle, bicycle he, here we want to track or a person we may wish to track uh, so in different uh, applications different uh, mm, objects are to be tracked and sometimes a single object or multi objects are also maybe of interest so what we do in, uh, in tracking is we want to identify a particular object where it is in the whole image. So unlike in detection, where we, in detection also we have the same problem of identifying a particular object in a whole image. But in tracking the advantage is we have the location of the object in the previous frame that we can assume because we might have already found or at the initial frame one can mark it. So from frame to frame, the object doesn't move that much. As you know, any object moving at uh, some pace or fast, well, from if you consider here, okay, if we take a, at a good frame rate, we can consider that the object movement from frame to frame is only uh, small uh, in the image space. Okay, that means it can't move this side, okay, or this side and so on. This may have been moved to this. Okay, and we can also use the motion information to estimate the object location more effectively. So these are the two clues in addition to what we have in object detection for doing performing tracking better. One thing is the object doesn't move too much and we have the bounding box of the previous uh, frame where the object is. Second is the object moves through a particular path. So we can use the motion information. Okay, so mm, deep learning architectures mainly focus on using uh, the first clue only. Uh, and of course, there are methods that use both uh, clues as well. So what the, uh, mm, how do we do is as we have discussed, we need to anyway, we will extract the features, deep features, because matching in the image space is much more difficult or describing an object in image space is difficult because person in different views and different uh, orientations looks completely different in image space, but they may look quite similar or much similar in the feature space. Okay, feature space meaning I, after extracting some convolution features here. Okay, so that's usually done. So objects, features, uh, and with same uh, CNN operations or same convolution operations, we extract the features of the whole search image or search object, the search uh, region and the object uh, to be tracked. Okay, so this may be marked from the first frame or we may have templates of it and so on. We extract features of it, we extract features of the search region. Then we want to know where the object is. Okay, this object is in this. So what do we do? We perform a convolution or a correlation. And wherever is the highest correlation, 
that we can say that there the object is. That simple it is. Okay, but the thing is, from frame to frame, this may be uh, moving slightly this side and this side and so on. So the search region, how do we decide is a question. Even if the search region is fine in how uh, these convolutions may not exactly provide the full information of object match because the features may match with many, uh, like uh, there may be similar objects in the surrounding or there may be variations of the object that doesn't match with the uh, object in the search space. So there is a reasonable training and robust training that is usually done for uh, accounting for different object variations. Okay, and essentially we have the mathematical equations of this side, this type. We will have actually initially the um, convolution um, operations. Oh, that is phi is a function, which is essentially convolution operations. Once we do convolutions and then what we do, features of the object and the target are correlated to see feature correlation map. This correlation map, if we consider it as, uh, for example, uh, V, okay, we assume that V is the correlation map. Then what we do? We construct a labels, okay, we know the ground truth labels. These ground truth labels are obtained from the, uh, uh, like, where the object is, is annotated in the videos. So we, if the object is present in a given location of, uh, say, image, then we say it is plus one. If object is not located in that region, it is minus one. Like that, we construct a ground truth map. This ground truth map, we want to see how much it is correlated to the correlation map. So these correlations also may match from minus one to one. And this ground truth is also from minus one to one. One being the object location, minus one being non-object locations or background. Okay, like this, we try to find out the similarity between Y and V. And the similarity is based function, okay, is L. This is the cost function. Cost function takes the similarity of Y and V. V comes from the correlation map uh, or the uh, correlation of uh, convolution feature maps. Okay. And then the Y is the ground truth. And that loss is minimized for all the um, uh, pixels in that uh, R features um, in that feature map. Okay. And this is all done across many batch, or, uh, batch of uh, um, frames. Uh, to see that actually we track the in each of each of the frame where the object is. And this is what essentially is done in tracking. As uh, in other methods or in other applications, here also we have good data sets to train. Okay, and then uh, we have good data sets to test. And there are some benchmark data sets like visual object tracking challenge data set and uh, a few other uh, benchmark data sets like multi object tracking data set and uh, also um, uh, OTB data set and so on, where we can have actually some different variations of the objects captured with uh, cha several challenging scenarios like blur, occlusion, fast motion, um, and then background clutter and so on, uh, in a, like evaluating these tracking methods. So this is effectively on the tracking. So are the details, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. Hope the details are clear. Okay, any questions from the students? We question. Okay, thank you then. So we'll uh, meet on Wednesday for the next class. Thank you. Thank you.